The Birthday Cake by Sven Nordquist There once was an old man called Petschen who had a cat named Findus. They lived in a little red house with a tool shed and a hen house and a wood shed and an outside loo and a garden. Round about there were fields and meadows and a little further away the forest. They said that Petschen was crazy. People talk so much, you don't know what to believe. It is true he was forgetful and absent-minded sometimes. He wasn't quite like other people, walking about alone and talking to the cat. That would not have been so bad either, if it had not been for what Mr Gustafsson told everybody about Petition's pancake mix, and about him climbing over the roof to get to the shop, and about him tying a curtain to the cat's tail. Gustafsson had seen that himself, so it had to be true. If you go around behaving like that, you just have to be crazy, don't you? All the things that made people talk about Petterson so much happened on Findus's birthday. Findus had birthdays three times a year, just because it was more fun that way. Every time the cat had a birthday, Petterson baked him a birthday cake out of pancakes. As usual, Petterson had been in the hen house that morning and filled a whole basket full of eggs. And now he was sitting on the bench outside the kitchen door, polishing the eggs. They had to be all nice and clean because Petterson wanted to do everything in a proper way. Findus paced impatiently up and down the bench waiting for the pancake baking to start. Is it necessary to polish all the eggs now? said the cat irritably. I'll have time for another birthday before the cake's ready. You're so impatient, said the old man. We'll just have to start right away then. We'll take three eggs into the kitchen and we'll see if there's going to be a cake. Of course there's going to be a cake, said Findus. He was already in the kitchen looking for the pan. The rest of the eggs were left in the basket on the bench. Petschen broke the eggs into a bowl. Now we need milk and sugar and a little salt and butter and flour, he said, taking the things from the larder. But he could not find the flour. Where's the flour? Have you eaten all the flour, Findus? He called from the larder. I certainly have not eaten all the flour, said Findus indignantly. Must have done it myself then, muttered the old man, scratching his nose thoughtfully. He looked another three times through the whole larder, in the wood stove, the wardrobe and the chest, but he could not find any flour. I'll have to bite down to the shop and buy some flour then. You wait here, I'll soon be back, said Petterson to the cat and he went out to get his blue bike. But the cat did not want to wait there, and he dashed out before the old man. Just as Petson was about to ride off on his bike, he noticed that the back tyre was flat. What's this now? Did you bite a hole in the tyre fenders? The old man complained in a temper. I certainly never bite holes in tyres, replied the cat indignantly. Must have done it myself then, mumbled the old man worriedly, pulling his ear. But it doesn't matter, I'll soon fix it. Just you wait here and I'll fetch some tools from the shed. Then I'll mend the puncture and I'll bike to the shop and buy some flour so we can get on with your birthday cake. But the cat did not want to wait there and ran to the shed before him. But just as Petson was about to open the door to the shed, the key was missing and the door could not be opened. What's the meaning of this? The old man mooned sulkily. This door's never locked. Is it you who lost the key, Findus? I certainly do not lose keys, replied the cat very indignantly. Must have done it myself then. That was a nuisance indeed 
groused the old man, thoughtfully poking his eye. To make sure, he peered in through the window. Then he tried the door again, but it was still locked. Then Findus whistled from the well and pointed down. Pedson hurried over to him. Oh, look, there's the key right at the bottom. How did it get there? And how am I to get it out? He pulled his lip and gave the matter some lengthy thought until his whole body jumped when he hit on the answer. I know. If I put a hook on a long stick, I'll be able to fish the key out. Have you got a long stick, Findus? I certainly never had a long stick, said Findus, not knowing if he should be indignant. Must have one myself somewhere then, the old man mused, scratching his hat. Just you wait here and I'll go and find one. Then I'll fish out the key and we'll get into the shed so I can fetch the tools, mend the bike so I can ride to the shop and buy some flour so we can get on with your birthday cake. But the cat did not want to wait there and ran ahead of him to look. So Pettison and his cat looked everywhere for a long stick. They looked in the hen house, behind the tool shed, in the garden, in the woodshed, behind the best sofa and in the larder, but nowhere did they find a long stick. Not until Pedson remembered that he had a long fishing rod in the loft of the tool shed. The fishing rod will do fine, thought Pedson. Just have to get the ladder first and climb over the roof and in through the skylight. But the ladder's behind the woodshed in Anderson's field. And that's where Anderson's bad-tempered red bull is too, asleep and using the ladder as a pillar. So I daren't go in and get it because he'll wake up and go mad. We'll have to trick him into moving first somehow. How can we do that though? Pettersen raked his beard and thought so hard you could hear his brain ticking over. Are you good at bullfighting? The old man asked Findus after a lengthy ponder. No, no, never fought a single bull, replied Findus alarmed. Pity, said Pettersen worriedly, because if we can't trick the bull into moving, I can't fetch the ladder, and, and then I can't get the fishing rod down from the loft, and then I can't get into the shed and get my tools, and then I can't mend the bike, and then I can't ride to the shop and buy some flour, and then there'll be no birthday cake. And what sort of a birthday will it be if we can't have a birthday cake? Findus sat in silence for a while. Then he said, I've made the odd cow or two run, though, of course, so I should be able to get that old bull to run to a pinch. Yes, I thought as much. Feeling the pinch in your stomach now, aren't you? said Pedson, peering at the cat knowingly. Maybe the fastest cat in the world is a bit lazy sometimes. I'll just go and fetch some things now, and then we'll get that bull running. You just wait here and I'll be straight back, he said, and he went into the house. In the kitchen, the old man took down one of the red and yellow flowered curtains and from the sitting room he fetched the gramophone with the horn-shaped speaker and the record. Then he went back out to the cat and he tied the curtain to his tail. They have a curtain like this when they bullfight in Spain, said Petson. Now don't run off before I give the word. Then off he went and put the gramophone at the gate to the field where Anderson's bull stood sleeping. He put the record on, wound up the gramophone. It was just another old man named Jussi Burling who was singing a song called To See. This should wake anyone up, chuckled the old man delightedly. When the sound bled out of the horn and out over the field, the bull first took a few sleepy steps back and forth settled his head on the rung of the ladder and went back to sleep 
because the singer on the record held back a little at the beginning. But afterwards, when he was giving it all, he got the ball really moved. He woke up with a jump, straight into the air, staring in alarm all around. What, what was that? He looked more and more irritated and glowered fiercely at a passing bumblebee. No, wasn't that. It came from somewhere behind. He span round, caught sight of Petson and the cat and the gramophone and bellowed, There it is. Take that dinner away or else I'll do it myself. And he lowered his head, stepping back and forth to gain a firm foothold. He tensed all his muscles, braced himself for the charge, and with a toss of his head, thundered towards Petterson and Findus and the gramophone. Now, whispered Petterson to the cat, run for all you're worth. And Findus shot off like a comet, with the red and yellow flowered curtain flapping from his tail. When the bull saw this, he turned sharply round and chased it, because he was so drowsy and bad-tempered that he thought it was the curtain blaring out the awful noise. When they'd made it halfway across the field, Petterson hurriedly crawled under the gate. He quickly fetched the ladder and crawled back again. Just then the cat came back at tremendous speed with the yellow curtain trailing behind him. The bull, who was completely exhausted from the chase, stood panting at the far end of the field, wondering what had happened. But Findus kept going anyway, propelled by the sheer speed past the bench outside the kitchen door where the egg basket stood. The curtain caught on the basket, turned it over and all the eggs rolled into a puddle. In the next instant, Petterson had also caught up in the curtain, tripped and sat right on the eggs. Not an egg was left unbroken. Petson let out a stream of bad language, struggled up and glowered at the sticky mess. Why did you put the egg basket on the bench, Findus? Look at this now, he ranted. I certainly did not put any eggs on bench, the cat hissed offended. Must have done it myself then, the old man hissed back. Then he calmed down because it was Findus's birthday. Ah, this is terrible, he sighed. I'll have to clean up a bit before I get on with your birthday cake, because I do like to do things properly. So he took a shovel and started to scoop up the muddy egg mess into a slop bucket. At this point, Gustafsson arrived. Hello, Petson. Working hard as usual, I see, said Gustafsson peering curiously at the eggy mess. Well, not much of that getting done today, Petson answered. We're celebrating a birthday, you see, so I'm making the pancake mix. I thought I'd bake us a really nice cake. He scooped up the last of the eggy mud from the puddle. There we are, he said, stretching and wiping his hands on the seat of his trousers. Then he felt that his trousers were all eggy and sticky. It's about time I treated myself to a new pair of trousers anyway. These are more than 30 years old, he thought, taking them off. We'll throw these in as well. If you have birthdays only three times a year, you should have a real celebration, he said, pressing the trousers down into the bucket. Gustafsson thus stared at the sludge in the bucket. Pancake mix? He cast a sideways glance cautiously at Petson. The old man must have gone crazy. The best thing to do is to pretend not to notice. I see. A pancake birthday cake for you and the cat. Sounds good, said Gustafsson, trying to sound encouraging. I'll say. My own recipe, said Petson, looking proud. But first I have to go to the shop and buy some flour. Wait here a while and I'll soon be back. He took the ladder and he went over to the tool shed, climbed up, disappeared over the other side of the roof. Gustafsson stood looking up at the roof for a few moments. Then he looked at the muddy, eggy mess in the bucket 
and at the cat pacing impatiently back and forth with a red and yellow flowered curtain tied to its tail and at the wind-up gramophone that had got stuck and was wailing see to see to see to see then he looked up at the roof again where Petson had disappeared the shop's in the other direction he said in a quiet voice then he turned and went home he looked as if he was deep in thought from that day on everyone in the area thought Petson had gone crazy but Findus didn't think so because after Petterson had crawled in through the skylight to the loft of the tool shed, he soon found the fishing rod. Then he climbed down again and bent on a steel wire hook to the end of the rod, and then he went to the well and he fished out the key. Then he opened the door to the tool shed and he got his tools and mended the puncture and rode to the bike, to the shop on the bike, and brought some flour and new trousers rode home again and baked a mouth-watering birthday cake for Findus. Then they sat in the garden drinking coffee and eating cake and playing Viennese waltzes on the wind-up gramophone, just as they usually did when Findus had a birthday. Peterson wasn't so crazy after all. <laughs>